Hey everyone, welcome back. What is up? This video has an insane amount of material and builds in it for Garuda Prime. So listen carefully. I'll be going over a more top level look in these setups. So if you want a more in-depth version of their original concepts, you can check each one out in the description below. These are the updated and tailored versions for Garuda Prime herself, so you will have to keep that in mind when looking at the older videos. I'm going to assume you have a fundamental understanding of basic Garuda mechanics, as this video is not meant as an introduction to the frame. If you have questions about these builds, leave them down in the comments and I will try my best to answer them. Since there are 7 builds and accompanying loadouts, let's get right into it. Build 1. This is a basic Garuda Roar build. This is a case of just overwhelming firepower, probably the simplest Garuda you can run. The only issue with Roar Garuda? She lacks reliable CC, since her build lacks it innately and we're subsuming on pure damage. With how fast paced a non-CC Garuda needs the play to survive, I did actually opt to slot on Flow, since you will probably have to frequent cast for Shield Gate. This is one of only two builds today that actually uses Flow, because the rest of the builds either have much more iframes, CC, or tailored specifically for Disruption. Natural Talent will find its way onto almost all Garuda builds today because of her overall spammy cast playstyle in general and even more so on aggressive non-CC builds like this. Narrow-minded because none of her abilities on this build scale off of range except her one, but you'll be close to enemies anyways. High strength to double dip Roar in her Seeking Talons, Force Bleeds for 3.59 times more damage. Nothing survives it. Rolling Guard for Shield Gate with Brief Respites, casting any of your abilities will fully regenerate your shields, including your one. As long as your Pistol or Sentinel has two Augur Pistol mods, a Vigorous Swap is optional in case you're using a Zor's Primer, alongside a Rifle or Non-Dual Wield Secondary. Bonus damage and faster swamp speed between guns if needed. Primeshare Footed will be a staple on all guns today. Arcane Eruption, because we have no other source of CC, so this is our survivability stopgap. And a Fire Rate Arcane for whether you are DPSing with rifles or pistols. Be quick, shoot fast, spam your one as needed, regen energy with your 3 for 150 back per tap. Your 4 only needs a tap now to launch the bleed priming forwards and is independent of range. You can use this with any weapon you want since you will be getting forced bleeds. Build 2. You've seen this one recently already. This is the Gloom Ruta Bloodforge build. It's very easy to use. You turn on Gloom, bring an AoE launcher, preferably Kuvazar. Whenever your magazine empties, cast your 3 to get energy back to sustain Gloom while also reloading your entire weapon instantly. Your Gloom will outheal the self damage you inflict from combat discipline, and this will proc Arcane Avenger for the flat 45 crits. You won't be using your 4 much, if at all. Acceleration to shoot the launcher faster, and this time you'll notice I subsumed Gloom over your 1 instead of 2. This is because I don't feel Mirror Ward really stops you from dying, it just makes you less likely to get hit. But the only way you can die is while your shields are down. Unlike your 1, your 2 will regenerate all your shields in a single cast if you have 2 Augur mods on your stat stick pistol. This lets you regenerate all shields instantly with iframes on top of the 78% gloom slow. This is the 175 plus kills per minute build I showcased last week and is currently one of the highest kills per minute builds in the game, if you just put in a little bit of extra effort on where you shoot. I've reached 200 since then a few times, though rarely. It's extremely easy to get 150 plus. A pet with enemy radar will help to see the densest spawns on the map. As a sample Kuvazar build, I have a Toxic Progenitor one for this loadout that uses this kind of build. Build 3. This is Garuda's version of my Magnum Opus Infinite Gas Surge Wisp build. We combine the Breach Surge Pure Gas setup, yes, Surge itself, doing gas damage, with Garuda here. This requires a double kit gun setup that I'll show their builds in a second, but the principle is theorem Demulchant picks up the elements of residual arcanes you stand in, which are created by kit guns that have residual arcanes equipped. One kit gun has toxin residuals, the other has heat. Zone buffs stick with you for 20 seconds and can be refreshed, and also build damage stacks. Together, toxin and heat residuals will create gas, and it also adds gas to breach surge itself, since it is considered a weapon. Vigor swap makes it easy to swap between your two kit guns, and conveniently, the 165% base damage also buffs breach surge, since, like I said, it's considered a weapon. It's a straight up 2.65 final multiplier to all breach surge damage. 
The gas surge will create gas clouds that damage themselves and proc its own sparks. You probably already know the synergy in the past between a traditional breach surge seeking talent's infinite damage loop. This is the even more OP version, where the breach surge both fuels itself for more sparks and even ramps up seeking talents. Feel energy with your 3. The build honestly should reach damage cap against enemies in a few seconds, but I've never seen anything last long enough beyond 1 second in the clouds with seeking talents mixed in with it. Arcane Velocity because the rifle kick gun will have Prime Shred on it for punch through and fire rate, but the pistol only has Seeker for punch through. The two kit gun builds for this Garuda loadout look like this. I won't be explaining them much beyond the fact that you use Breach Surge to keep yourself alive in blinds, while also helping you to kill enemies to start creating residual zone auras to stand in. Switch between the guns as needed to get both heat and tox and residual buffs, then your Breach Surge will start destroying everything instantly. You can drag more enemies into existing clouds as well with Magus Anomaly and they will literally die on contact with them. If you want a more detailed explanation on what's going on here, I would strongly recommend checking out the Wisp Gas Surge video up top. Build 4 This is an evolution of the Soma Prime semi-auto one-shot Garuda. The build used Nourish to save slots on Soma to squeeze on other really important mods you can't normally fit on a Soma. You didn't need Hunter Munitions or a Toxin mod because of Garuda's kit, but this time we're using Thermal Transfer instead. Reason being, it has higher base elemental scaling, giving 75% cold instead of 50% toxin. Thermal Transfer also lasts 30 seconds at base instead of Nourish lasting only 25. We're also building for a lot of range because Thermal Transfer cold leaves behind an aura that you can walk back into like Wisp modes to get the cold buff refresh the full duration. Basically, better elemental bonus, longer lasting buff, refreshable buff without recasting, and a persistent CC aura. You can also recast it whenever for full shield gate with brief respite in a single cast, because this loadout has questionable CC and is entirely reliant on the cold zones to keep enemies from shooting at you, I've also opted for arcane eruption for the knockdowns. Arcane acceleration because, well, it's a Soma, but honestly this build will work on every single assault rifle. Or you could use it on launchers, etc, but its main purpose was to make single target weapons viable again and kill on single hits. You still zoom zoom around a decent bit, so I didn't opt for the blending talents build since most of the enemies will be in front of you. Sample Soma build for this loadout would look like this. For base steel path, Galvanized Scope will work against trash mobs and let you sit at stable red crits against enemies. Endurance, I would recommend Critical Delay and Merciless instead to get the initial crits off the ground when you reload and lose Hadas at ya. No, Bloodforge will not let you skip the augment resets, currently nothing in the game lets you. I would strongly recommend running this with Stabilizer Exilus and a Carrier Sentinel with Ammo Case to deal with the Ammo Drain. Stabilizer plus Deadhead for the shorter missions will remove all the recoil and make the gun laser accurate. Pure Toxin 6060s because of Thermal Transfer giving cold. You can bring a Zorus if you want as a melee primer for extra statuses. Build 5. This one is a Steel Path Disruption build focused around shredding demolists. Your typical infinite loop slash from Seeking Talents and Expedite Suffering. Seeking Talents makes all damage that you inflict on the debuffed enemy create a slash tick, including from abilities. Expedite Suffering in this build will take all existing bleeds on the Demless and apply it as one big hit, and multiply it by strength for 2.54 times more damage. But the thing is, this Expedite hit will trigger another bleed if Seeking Talons is still active on the demo. Then you can cast Expedite again to drain the bleed and multiply it by 2.54 times again and the cycle repeats until either the Demolist is dead, or Seeking Talons is pulsed off. If Seeking Talons is pulsed off, don't fret, don't cast Expedite. Cast your 4 again first, then continue the loop. Otherwise, you will lose all your slash ticks. But the damage basically scales at 2.54 times exponential on this build. First Expedite does 2.54 damage, second does 6.45, third does 16.39, and it just keeps growing from there. That's why Natural Talent is so important to make sure you get in as many casts as possible before the demo nully pulses it off. The build lacks CC and makes it harder to survive, so Arcane Eruption is once again our CC Arcane of choice. Combine this with Brief Respite and casting any ability, so long as you have two Augur mods on pistols or Sentinel Burst Laser stat stick, will regenerate all shields. Your Mirror Ward will be important to denying frontal damage, so keep it up at all times. Arcane Acceleration is a placeholder for any kind of fire rate arcane for whatever will be used to inflict damage against the demo. Shotguns use Arcane Tempo. Pistols will use Velocity. Any higher raw damage crit scaling weapon should work fine. Viral Primer can be done with melee or the non-DPS gun, and that's where Vigorous Swap comes in to help us with gun swapping as needed and some extra base damage. 
Blood Forge lets you instantly reload weapons as you prepare for the demo or need to recover mid DPS rotation. Basically, look at the demo, prime the crap out of it, cast your four and shoot with DPS, then spam Expedite until it's dead. If it nullies the Seeking Talons, just cast it again before you spam Expedite. Now build 6. You probably have seen these build variants around quite a lot lately. Yes, it is a Reeve Garuda, except we got one extra little twist. This is also a Dreadward Garuda. We don't see these around very much, do we? Why do this? Well, Reeve builds generally already have a decent amount of iframes. And with Garuda's rework, you get even more iframes. It's honestly pretty hard to die in Reeve Garuda, but how about literal invincibility? It's only a little bit more of a stretch, but I just thought it was really funny to build her this way, especially after DE just axed the Null Star setups, letting you reach 100% damage reduction recently. After literally half a year of my videos being out. Two videos, in fact. So, I guess you can't really say things get patched because of me, as that took a full eternity. It was fun while we had it. Dread Ward requires instant kills from Dread Mirror hits to activate it. Dread Mirror requires 40% or lower HP to one-shot them, which can be really annoying, since enemies are either near 100% since you can't kill them, or they're already dead. You can sort of get around this with their 4, but it's annoying waiting on the slash ticks and looking at HP bars. Reeve, instead, does percent HP damage, which makes it extremely reliable to put enemies under the 40% HP threshold without killing them. Basically, you want invincibility? Just reave the enemy. You want to kill them? Cast your 4 and then reave them to one-shot them on the slash bleeds. This build has 185 strength. I chose this number for a specific reason. Reeve claims it does 74% HP damage here, but that isn't true. This is the damage value to enthrall targets, which only Revenant can enthrall and is 5 times higher than normal. So the actual damage we're doing is 14.8% HP. This is a very poor number because Garuda's passive is no longer reliant on low HP, which Reeve would ruin by healing you in the past. Now, she has a permanent 2 times damage multiplier that also applies to Reeve. So each Reeve hit will drain 29.6% HP, a single viral proc will push this to 59.2, which is just under the 60% we need to one-shot them with the Dread Ward for a 16.68 seconds invincibility. The damage of the primer itself should be enough to do this. If you have the polarities for it, slot Umbral Intensify and you'll be easily above the 60% HP damage dealt threshold. So an AoE primer like Epitaph is perfect for this, a single shot plus Reeve will put them under 40% HP. The wide range also makes sure we hit everything with Reeve, a slight duration bump to go with it for more speed as well. With Dreadward's 16.68 seconds in vulnerability, charging it up for big boom damage, iframes with your 2 and 4, infinite energy with your 3, you literally can't die, and natural talents once again makes everything feel smoother. Eruption for CC again since her helmet that doesn't have it, and velocity to prime with epitaph faster as needed. I'm using a generic epitaph build like this, with auger mods for a little shield to regen. You don't really need max shield since we have invincibility, but it's a just in case for sloppy scenarios. Viral and radiation to draw aggro away from you since no CC ability, the built in blast and cold also helps. Honestly, I find the build is pretty satisfying to use, and the dread ward also stagger blocks acolytes, they kinda just get stuck in front of you when it hits them. And finally, build 7. Remember the invincible Garuda build I made ages ago that was focused around Banish and her talents? Yeah, that one. Well, it's back, and stronger than ever. Her primed talents still hit through the rift, except now they do about 10% more raw damage, and nearly doubled crit chance from 20 to 35. Now it has 35% crit chance, but the same high 2.3 crit multiplier, and the 36 status. They reach 227.5% total crit at 12x combo, with Blood Rush and Gladiator Might. Bring 2 weapons for 2 times Arcane Dexterity, and you get to add a free 15 seconds combo duration since your guns can't hit through Rift anyways. Basically, you just spam Banish on everything in sight. Also, make sure you're using the 4 Rider stance, because Malicious Raptor is poopy. We were struggling to do relevant damage with it in the past, but now, easy orange crits with zero efforts, more damage, and now benefits from all those acolytes mons too? It just shreds. This is a build focused around pure slash as it isn't worth slotting viral on it. I would rather bet on a panzer because the viral quills that it spreads will pass through the rift plane and still prime enemies with viral stacks. That way you open up more mon slots for even more damage.
The Gruta build is reminiscent of the original video, but a few things have changed. We no longer need quick thinking. So we could finally fit Rolling Guard for more iframe safety when resetting shields. We only need to reach 134 strength for 100% bleeds of your 4 if you choose to use it, so that's what we got here. We are keeping Mirror Ward for frontal damage block in case you miss some enemies. 3 Augur Mods from Reach, and your 2 on your pistol, or Sentinel, will make Banish regen 37.5 shields, which means 2 casts regenerates exactly enough shields to fully reset your shield gate. Flow is there for if you want to spam your 4, otherwise you can alternatively slot in the Blending Talons augment for comfier use of your 4 and take advantage of that 220 range for 19.8 meter bleed priming radius. We also no longer need combat discipline in our Avenger because the weapon naturally hits 200% plus crit chance now. This means we can slot Steel Charge and Arcane Fury for a massive DPS boost since we won't be using Condition Overload as we can't prime properly. That's an extra 240% base damage on the Talons, or nearly doubling our damage output. Arcane Strike, because, well, the Talons aren't fast. And there we go, the 7 top tier Garuda builds, mixed and matched as you like. What did you think? These are the Garuda builds I use and updated from over the past year. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like, or better yet, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always, as soon as possible. Like I'm done with covering the new augments, Garuda's rework, and upcoming Angels of Zeramon. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and see you all next time.